Okay, welcome to our Google Hangout tonight. This is our computer science and mathematics Google Hangout. Tonight we are going to talk about both programs and the advantage of combining the two programs together for a double major or a minor. Um, with us here tonight we have uh, Professor Aaron Blodgett, who is a mathematics professor here at the University of Finley, and Alex Mosier. He is a current senior with senioritis. He's about ready to graduate here in um, next month. So he is a mathematics and computer science major. And he just told me that he already has a job lined up at Marathon. So that's fantastic. So we are going to go ahead and get started. We may have another professor joining us here soon. Walk by, so Did you? Okay. <laughs> so we may have someone walk in here late, but that's okay. We'll uh, roll with punches here. So. We're going to go ahead and let you guys get started. Aaron, if you can talk about maybe um, your role here as a professor and the classes that you teach, and then we'll move next to Alex, and you can tell us a little about yourself, okay? So, yeah, I'm uh, Aaron Blodgett. I'm a math professor here. Um, I mainly, um, a lot of the courses I teach are the lower level courses. Um, I teach. Um, the basic statistics class that everyone has to take. Um, I teach everything from algebra, pre-cal, calculus, but then I also teach some of the higher level courses. Um, this semester I'm teaching a course in um, cryptology, and that's one of the, that's a math course, but we get a lot of the computer science uh, professors taking that, and um, I'm also te teaching a course in complex analysis. So we've got a lot of interesting math courses here. Okay. We did have a few more professors join us here. Um, here joining us right now is Dr. Mary Jo Geise. She is a professor of the computer science program and co-chair of the computer science program. So Mary Jo, why don't you tell us a little about yourself? Well, I've been here at the university. I'm just finishing my 33rd year here. And I've uh, done quite a bit over those years in terms of teaching math, teaching computer science, uh, serving as Dean of the College of Sciences for three and a half years, working for ITS. So I've had a wide variety of experiences, but uh, right now most of my work, well all of my work I would say is with the computer science area. Right, go ahead Alex. Okay, so I'm Alex Mosier. I'm a senior computer science and math major. Um, I've been involved with uh, all the math and computer science clubs. Um, I'm also involved with like our Choose Ohio First Scholars, uh, which is where we're programming Lego robots, which is really interesting. Um, yes, I've been an officer in both uh, computer science and math clubs, and so that's been a lot of time, but it's been fun. Great. And we also have with us here tonight um, uh, the chair of the mathematics program as well. And she is off camera um, simply because we have so many people here joining us tonight who are very eager to talk to you about this program, about both programs. We just don't have enough room on our camera to fit everyone in. So if you do have questions, feel free to um, type those in on the Google wall here, or you can tweet us at UFinley. It's at U-F-I-N-D-L-A-Y, and use hashtag AskUF. That's A-S-K-U-F. So we are going to go ahead and get started. And if you have any questions, please let us know. So if you guys can go ahead and tell us more about both the mathematics and the computer science program, how they integrate well together, and what students can expect when they do integrate those programs together and, and either double major or minor, maybe what kind of career options they can expect. Um, Alex, you can speak maybe to your internship that you had and your coming job, and then um, Dr. Geise, and, and, and you can speak to basically about the experiences that other students have had here at the university. Don't everybody start at once. <laughs> I'm relatively new still, so I don't, I don't know all my students' experiences. I can talk about um, my own, though. Um, before I got my doctorate in mathematics, I was a programmer for a couple of years, and I did, um, I'm pretty certain that I got that job because I had double majored in computer science and mathematics. Um, a lot of times it's hard to get your foot in the door um, with just a degree in computer science. They want people with experience. So um, having that math degree means that you can also, um, you're a quick learner and you can take on more challenge. So, yeah, for me, uh, as far as like any interviews and internships I had, 
I know every time I would go in and they would see that I'm both a mathematics and a computer science major, they were really interested and they knew that I could learn and had the good, the good critical thinking skills. And everything like that, so. Well, I can certainly say, you know, based as long as I've been in the field, that I was a mathematician before I was a computer scientist. Uh, so I started out teaching math, and uh, in terms of computer science, if you have a strong math background, computer science is natural. So they do work very, very well together. Uh, but then on the other hand, I do want to say for those of you that say, gee, I really don't want to be a math major too, you don't have to be to be a computer scientist. That's a nice thing. Uh, those that do both, um, it shows in their problem solving ability and their critical thinking ability, but we've had some very, very strong students graduate from our program who really just took minimal math courses as well and have done well. Um, there's just a wide variety of things that you can do with a computer science degree. You can work in any, I would say basically any occupation that you want to, uh, to comply it with. So, you know, probably if you don't want to do a lot of math, you would go in one that's not quite as mathematical. But there's, the job opportunities are fabulous out there for computer science right now. Good. Um, Alex, can you speak a little bit more about maybe the internship that you had and, and what you're expecting once you get to Marathon there in your full-time position? Okay, so I interned first at Marathon and uh, that was more of a programming role, uh, but as far as like the math background, it definitely did help me because all the logic that goes behind the program takes a lot of math. Um, that one wasn't too bad. Uh, I hadn't taken enough programming during the classes to actually uh, get integrated pretty easily. Um, then I also went on to General Electric and I interned there in the summer and uh, I actually had to pick up SQL and uh, Oracle databases and that was fairly difficult but I was able to do it within a month or so so then I could have a couple of productive months over the summer. Great. And, and you're excited about your position coming out of school here? Yeah, we were just talking about how he, he, you were saying that, you know, this is probably one of your hardest semesters, but, you know, you're really looking forward to the classes and, and being done and getting out in the marathon and out in the workforce. So it's great to get a job lined up already. How how that process go for you as far as is acquiring that job? Did you receive help here through our career placements office, through faculty interaction? Or? Yeah, uh, Dr. Geisy and Dr. Warden both, both helped me out quite a bit. Um, I actually received two different offers, one from Cooper and one from Marathon, and I actually was able to negotiate with them to get the deal that I wanted. Great. Dr. Geisy, can you talk more about maybe some other big employers that our, our graduates seem to go to, like Plumline and places right. like that? Right, sure. Uh, you know, Marathon has certainly been, well, let me back up for a minute. I would say a lot of our employers at this point in time, they really are using internship opportunities to seek out the talent that they want in terms of uh, finding who fits into their organization, who has the type of work ethic and work background that they're looking for. So internship opportunities are really, really important. Um, and right now, our students, we, we have quite a few students that have been at Marathon, either have been or are going there, have already accepted internship offers. Uh, we have, I know at least one student that's going to Cooper this summer, Cooper Tire Rubber Company, uh, and um, it appears like their IT operations are on an upswing right now, so I would expect that we'll have more opportunities there than what we've had maybe in the last few years. Plumline, uh, that's a smaller software place in town. They've hired several. We've had some at Centricom, we've had some at Blanchard Valley Hospital, Blanchard Valley Schools. Um, um, Tour de Force is a new place that we've had some students at, and that's worked really well for us too. They seem to be very happy with our students. You know, the key thing is, is to make sure that the right student gets in the right place, particularly when we're starting out, so that they see how valuable that they can be. And uh, usually when they get a good student, uh, then they want more. Another place that we've been negotiating, trying to get someone into, is that one's according in Toledo. So we hope to, you know, we have a couple that are almost there, so we're hoping to get one there soon as well. 
I know you said that they're, you know, students who graduate with these type of degrees can pretty much go anywhere. They can pretty much do anything. Are there specific job titles that students look for or um, maybe a student's interested in, in, in doing something they know they want to do something specific, but, you know, they don't know that a, a degree in math and computer science would be the right fit for that? Well, it's a... Uh I guess what I mean is they can use programming. It may be programming they're designing if it's a, you know, someone that likes fashion. Maybe they're using computers to design clothing. Uh, you know, maybe they're doing regular business types of operations, payroll. You know, you know, we have to have someone that does those types of jobs. Maybe they're doing jobs to create a creative solution to some other business type of. Um, but that's what I mean. They can work for different types of inter industries. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be in a cubicle programming 24 uh, 7. That's not what it is. In fact, if you look at some of the places like Google, um, in places out on the West Coast, they have fabulous work situations. Um, you know, if you want to get some sort of a glimpse on what it could look like, go out to the code.org site. And they have several videos where they actually show some of the working environments. And uh, they're some of the coolest places you can possibly imagine. And Aaron, I don't know if you could talk more about um, the mathematics side and, and maybe some specific uh, math careers like actuaries and things like that that maybe students would, would be interested in as well. So, yeah, um, <clears throat> the actuary, we have an actuary program. Um, basically what an actuary does is they work for insurance companies. Um, they do the statistics around mortality rates and uh, things like that, um, and they're in high demand. Um, uh, I guess let me um, give a couple specific examples. We had a, uh, um, a student this past summer who did an internship with NASA, and now um, she's graduating this year, and she's got a job lined up for uh, um, some company that does math modeling for the government. Uh, last year we had uh, a student graduate from the math department who had an internship with the FBI and um, I'm not sure if that actually turned into a full-time position yet or if it's expected to but... Um, uh, You're talking about the double major it did. Okay. It did. Yeah. And I, I would think that you know <clears throat> when it comes to being an actuary, having a little bit of computer science background would be good too. So that's where I think, you know, a lot of students don't realize how much of a great pairing the two degrees are together. So it's nice to be able to, to put those two together and really diversify yourself and open up more more career doors. So You know, I'm going to say even if you're not a computer science or math major, mm -hmm. the fact that we are so dependent upon technology, everyone knowing a little bit about coding, they're just going to enhance their value with their company. Yeah, I think I read something the other day where pretty much any job nowadays has has some kind of technology involved in it, and, and you know there's there's no way around it. You know, you, you need to know technology in some format to to be in your job. So, um, so what what are your career goals, Alex? Do you I know you said you have your job at Marathon lined up there. Do you have um, any future goals? Where do you see yourself ten years from now? Do you do you want to move on somewhere else, or you want to stay at Marathon? Or well, right now I'd like to stay at Marathon. I think uh, they have a really good uh, call it like life career there or whatever that um I hopefully be able to uh, move my way up on like the management chain. Uh, right now, though, I'd say for at least 10 years, I'd like to be just a programmer. I really do enjoy just sitting down and coding all day. And um, I'd like to be able to keep that for as long as I can. But eventually, I'd like to go to management. And, stuff. Um, and we were talking earlier about how you're involved in the math club here. So can you talk a bit more about how what you do in the math club? Here yes. Yeah. So for our math club, I'm the secretary. And uh, basically, I help uh, send out emails and keep everyone communicated and up-to-date about the events we're doing. Um, but as far as Math Club, I've been participating in the Math Club since I think my sophomore year, I think so. so it's, and it's been fun. We do all kinds of fun things. And, I mean, it's sometimes we do kind of mathy things, other times we do stuff that's not even related to math. And it's just it's just to be fun and to really stress from schools. Okay. Are you involved in any other clubs or organizations here? Yeah, I have been involved in our ACM Computer Science Club 
and I was vice president my junior year. And um, I am not able to go to that this year because of classes, but I have been involved in programs. Also, with the Choose Ohio First group, that's almost like a club in and of yeah. itself, too. Tell us more about Choose Ohio First if you want to. Well, that's a program that we've had through the state of Ohio. Actually, uh, we can't accept any more first year students. Sorry about that. Because the program is, uh, they're kind of closing off this version of the program and then they're getting ready to start a new one, which we will apply for. But what that's done is, and I'm sure that the new program should be somewhat similar, is that uh, students who graduate from Ohio High School have the opportunity to apply for extra funding. And uh, this program has actually even changed since we originally implemented it. Um, the first year, Truly, we gave funds, and that was really about it. They were a Choose Ohio First Scholar, and there wasn't much to it. But uh, now, we've actually uh, gathered the folks, and we've become more active. We've become a presence on campus where we're doing things. And uh, the state really likes that, and I think that helps them in terms of encouraging uh, the representatives down there to uh, further support this program. So. You know, we're anxious to see what the next iteration is going to look like and hope that we will be able to be funded through that as well. So right now we do have eight Choose Ohio First Scholars, two at each of the four levels. And uh, we will graduate two this year, so we'll be down to six. And do you want to talk a little more about um, the LEGO robots, how that worked, how they programmed those, and the ALICE programming, things like that? Right. Uh, LEGO Robots was a project that we had, uh, well, we went out and purchased 15 robots and uh, we decided that that was a good project for them. Last year we had them, uh, basically, you know, we bought them, we weren't really sure what we were going to do with them, and so their task was to learn about them and teach the faculty members, which they did. Uh, this year, um, we've done something a little bit different. They took what they learned last year and they put together uh, what we call an hour of code. That's a movement where we're trying to expose more individuals to coding, hoping that that will um, encourage people that, gee, maybe I'd like to do this as a career. So uh, they will be presenting this to an IT Explorer group through Marathon tomorrow night, uh, what they've come up with. And then we hope to be able to use that program uh, on STEM days and, and other times after that. But they have the robots going through a maze. and. Uh, what the scholars did was they took a program that it would make it go through the maze and then they put some errors into it so that students could learn how to debug programs. So it looks like a good exercise and we'll see how it goes tomorrow night. So that's one of the very unique hands-on opportunities that our students have here with computer science. What about the ALICE programming? ALICE programming is another way that we've done it. Uh, both of the LEGO robots and ALICE programming are in some sort of a way very similar environments because it's really a drag and drop environment where they're uh, able to get some pretty immediate gratification in terms of seeing what their codes do uh, and the codes really generate in the background. So uh, in both of those languages we could write code as a programmer but you know these are less intimidating forms of again showing people that the cause and effect of what a statement would do. So they're kind of fun. So I, you know, students generally enjoy that. In fact, we did Alice in one of my um, introduction to computer classes on campus this year. It was a really good class, and we had enough time. We looked good in terms of time, so we decided to take a day and do that. And I think they all enjoyed it. Right. Now I know math itself has some very unique things that they do with their students too, like uh, Barbie bungee jump. The math club did that, and. Um, March Madness, um, kind of calculating those to see the March Madness bracket, and then uh, mathematics of counterterrorism. So, I mean, some really unique things going on in the mathematics program, too. So, can both of you talk more about that? So, um, the Barbie, the Barbie bungee jumping is um, an event that the math club does. Um, basically, we have um, Students use uh, rubber bands and they try out a few tests and they use regression to try to um, figure out how many rubber bands to use so that uh, um, when Barbie is pushed off of a ledge, um, 
she gets as close to the floor as possible without breaking her neck. Um, the mathematics of counterterrorism um, and was the uh, the March Madness brackets. March Madness brackets were um, student research projects. So those were things that one or two students did um, with Dr. Wharton to. Um, basically go that extra step and further their own research. They did talks at our own symposium here on campus, and then they also gave talks at the uh, Ohio Mathematics Association of America meeting. I think that's one of the nice things about our programs here is you, you do get a lot of undergraduate research opportunities in these areas. So are there, is there anything else, any other research opportunities maybe that Alex, that you've had to, a chance to partake in or Dr. Geisey, if you want to speak to the computer science area too? Well, I would say right now in the computer science area, and this is kind of a, a subset of the ACM group. Uh, in the department, we bought uh, several Raspberry Pis, and so they're programming and doing some different things with that. And I'm sure that will continue through, you know, that they have enough to keep them busy for a couple of years, I would say, anyhow. And uh, uh, we also have Dr. Ringenberg, our newest faculty member. He's running some uh, under, student undergraduate research with, um, it really has to do with blending psychology and computer science together. So he has a station set up where he's doing that. So we do have a small room where we, we're, we're running both of those events right now. Can you tell us more about what they're doing at the Raspberry Pis? Because I sat in on that presentation. There was some really cool stuff they were doing with those. I know that they're working on a game. They, was, they were doing something with music. Um, they gave us a little bit of a preview, but uh, they were having some difficulty showing us everything that day. So they have, they have lots of plans. Like I said, I think next year when they have a full school year, uh, we didn't get them until right before Christmas. And I kind of thought maybe we should hang on to them until second semester because right before finals probably not would not be a good thing to do to pull the toys in. So uh, they haven't had very long yet, but I, I expect to see lots of good things come out of that as well. And they're also experimenting to put together an hour of code for students, but. I think they're struggling with what level to do this at because they thought they had an hour of code and they had some people in there for a couple hours that were struggling to get it done. So they need to trim back a little bit and rethink what they're doing. But again, it, it's a learning experience. It's great. And, you know, just talking about some of the opportunities that our students have, and I'm going to talk about Alex a little bit here too. Um, you know, just the last. I would say a week or so, um, the involvement that this young man's had between <clears throat> presenting for, um, we had a senior forum for the Choose Ohio First where he presented. We had our uh, symposium where he presented there. He was presenting, I understand, Saturday morning at a scholarship uh, luncheon. And then he's here tonight with us. Uh, he is our outstanding senior, and there's a reason why, you know, and he's uh, had, I think, a lot of opportunities because of the fact that he's been such a strong student. Good. Well, Alex, why did you choose the University of Finley? Since we're, we're praising you right now and all your fantastic work you're doing, what made you choose the University of Finley? Um, well, I visited probably four or five colleges when I was in high school, and the University of Finley was like the only one I really felt like it was a nice campus and something that I would actually like. Um, I came from a small high school, but I didn't really want to go to a huge college. I wanted kind of the small classes still, which is what I got, and it's really great because I can always go to any professor and ask for help. Um, and basically, like, I like well, just the campus feel here. Um, I like our kind of how all of our houses are set up. Um, like we have the computer science house and math house, they're right next to each other, so I can go in one spot and basically get, get all my questions answered and happen. Okay. Um, what about what what makes the University of Finley different as far as the computer science and the mathematics program goes? And and I know both professors can speak to this as well, but maybe Alex, when you visited the other. Other colleges don't name any names, but you know, when you visit other places, what made our program stand out to you? I mean, did you get to meet with faculty while you were here when you visited? Um, I did not actually meet faculty. I visited with football, and so I, they kind of just took me around campus. Um, 
but like I said, with the small classes, yeah. uh, kind of the individualized learning, it's, it's definitely a plus. You guys want to speak to, to your areas and maybe toot your own horn for a little bit here? Talk about the Well, you know, talking a little bit about computer science, one of the things that we offer that not all computer science programs offer is that we have uh, a computer science core, which in and of itself could be considered a computer science major at some institutions. But in addition to that, we have five emphasis areas that students pick from, and when they do that emphasis area, that many times is what distinguishes them between, from another computer science major that might be going for the same job. Our emphasis areas that we have right now are business, mathematics, information assurance, uh, web and database, and computer systems. So uh, again, it just gives them just that little extra. And all of our students have to complete one emphasis area. We have many students that do two emphasis areas, and we actually have one student that stayed an extra year and did all five. That's dedication. Right, right. <laughs> so. um, we mentioned the math house and the computer science house. Um, and it is kind of like a family in there almost. In the math house, I know, a student can come in and if their professor isn't available, they can go talk to any professor there. Um, we're all happy to help. I overheard just today um, a, one of my students in my cryptology class talking to one of the other professors about this project that I had designed. So, um, yeah, we're a pretty tight knit group. Good. Um, tell us about three C's, Mary Jo. 3C Computer Repairs was started, I would say, about three years ago. Uh, and uh, again, it's a good opportunity for students to experience something outside of the classroom. So um, this was a way that some of the, the students that worked there, and actually Alex worked there for a short period of time too, um, you know, our program teaches a lot about programming, about the software side. Uh, 3C computer repairs many times is hardware oriented as well. So it gave the students another perspective to learn a little bit more about computers. In addition, those that were uh, managing, um, I know my daughter was one of the original ones in there, and uh, so they had to keep books. They had to write business plans. They had to look for resources and, you know, the leadership that went with some of that in the business aspect. So. That, that was just a good bonus to their education. And 3Cs is a student-run business, so that <coughs> students can, basically students run the business, like you said, and, and um, anyone from the community can bring their computers yes. in, anyone from campus can bring their computers in, which gives them a lot of nice um, diversity of experience with customers and, right. and working with different types of people. So I thought that was a really unique aspect of that student-run uh, student business. But. Um, is there anything else you guys wanted to add about your programs while we're here tonight? We haven't had any questions come in yet, but uh, we will be sending this video out to everyone um, that we originally sent the invite out to, along with posting this on our website. So um, you can view this live or you view this live video at another time and be recorded. Um, so go ahead with some ending thoughts. Maybe why? Uh, what advice do you guys have for students who might be trying to make their college decision now? Well, <laughs> basically, your first choice doesn't always have to be your last choice. Um, I know a lot of students that have transferred, and it's not always necessarily a terrible thing. Um, but definitely when you choose a college, make sure there's a good reason why you're choosing it, and not just some reason like you just want to party or something like that. So. Yeah, um, make sure to visit campuses, make sure to look around at your different options and yeah, be the best choice you can. I would say wherever you choose to go, you should become actively engaged in that campus. Uh, you know, find activities, and particularly if they're related to your major, because many times that becomes a resume builder. But even more importantly than that, it'll introduce you to other students that are in the same major, so you can make some good relationships. You know, get to know your faculty members. And, you know, that's why I think. Um, our small school environment is so uh, important because you actually can get to know your faculty members. Um, 
you know, I have relationships with students yet that graduated 20 years ago. Um, and, and that's a real positive thing because a lot of times then that has actually created uh, pathways where students can go and get internships too. So, um, you know, again, you need to go where you can be involved. If, if it's somewhere where you're not and you're just in your dorm room or commuting and you go to class and then leave, you're just not going to get nearly as much out of it. Okay, guys, the best way to experience campus is to visit. You know that. So what we want you to do is go to our website, keyword visit, and schedule your visit to come to campus. You can have a tour of campus, talk to an admissions counselor, talk to one of our faculty members here about the programs. Um, you know, we'll, we'll treat you like royalty while you're here. You'll have a good time. And it's really, really nice out right now, too. So the weather's turning. The weather's getting nicer. It's a great time to visit campus. So get on our website and schedule a visit. Um, if you have questions, you can email us at admissions, um, admissions at finley.edu. So um, go ahead and email us there. And um, we will be posting this on our website. And I'll be emailing it out to everyone so you can watch it. Um, have a good night.